Russia has said it downed a Ukrainian drone, a missile rather, in Crimea. It claims to have struck Ukrainian command points and an intelligence outpost with high-precision, long-range, air-based and sea-based weapons. Russia also said it sank an enemy boat off Snake Island with a Su-30 fighter jet. This comes a day after Ukraine's capital, Kiev, came under Russian missile and drone attack. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has denounced what he called corrupt decisions made by medical commissions. These are assessments about whether Ukrainians are fit to serve in the military. He highlighted that medical exemptions from military service in some regions increased tenfold. Ukrainian law enforcement has also documented instances of officials receiving bribes worth thousands of dollars. Zelensky recently signed a decree formalizing the decision to fire all heads of regional recruitment offices. North Korea launched two short-range ballistic missiles towards the sea on Wednesday. This came hours after the US tested long-range bombers with South Korea. Seoul's Joint Chiefs of Staff said that North Korean missiles travelled about 360 kilometres before landing in the waters near the Korean Peninsula. The missiles were launched from North Korea's capital, Pyongyang. The South Korean military conducted large-scale manoeuvre exercises on Thursday. This is a part of the Ulchi Freedom Shield drills which South Korea and the United States began last week. About 1,600 soldiers and 450 military equipment units have been deployed to participate in the training. The Ulchi Freedom Shield exercise is nearing its end. Its aim is to ramp up the response against North Korea's nuclear and missile threats. Japan is seeking to raise its defence spending to over $52 billion for fiscal year 2024. The request comes at a time when Japan's relations with China have sharply deteriorated. Tokyo recent, recently released treated wastewater from the Fukushima nuclear power plant into the Pacific Ocean. This move angered China, which then banned all seafood imports from Japan. Chinese President Xi Jinping is likely to skip the G20 summit that India will host next week. Chinese Premier Li Qiang is expected to represent Beijing in the meetings in New Delhi. This comes at a time when India and China are engaged in talks over a standoff at the border. The G20 summit was being viewed as a venue where US President Joe Biden and Xi Jinping would have come face to face. This is crucial at a time when Washington and Beijing are trying to stabilize ties. Benin's president, Patrice Talon, has arrived in the Chinese capital of Beijing today. Talon is on a four-day state visit to China. This visit aims to deepen already close ties between the two countries. Chinese President Xi Jinping is likely to hold a welcome ceremony and a banquet dinner. This is the first visit by Benin's president to China since the year 2018. Gabon's military has named General Brice Ulgui Niguema as transition leader. Gabon is located in Central Africa. Niguema is a former head of the Presidential Guard. Military officers placed President Ali Bongo under house arrest just minutes after Gabon's election body announced that he had won a third term. While declaring the coup, Gabon's military said the election results were cancelled, borders were closed and state institutions were dissolved. At least 70 people were killed after a building caught fire in South Africa's Johannesburg city. Over 40 people have sustained burn injuries. Search and rescue efforts are underway and officials say it is not clear what caused the fire. A US judge in Washington has ruled that former President Donald Trump's ex-lawyer Rudy Gianni is liable for defaming two Georgia election workers. They were targeted in vote-tricking accusations after the 2020 US presidential election. The judge ordered sanctions against Giuliani for failing to turn over electronic records sought by the two Fulton County election workers. Giuliani argues that he sought to turn over records but faced several obstacles. 
New York's Attorney General has asked a state judge to declare that Donald Trump committed fraud. This is in a case involving the submission of false statements to bankers and insurers, also overstating his net worth by over $2 billion. The New York Attorney General wants this declaration before a trial in this case begins. It was highlighted that the civil case shows Donald Trump and his family members repeatedly used misleading financial statements from the year 2011 to 2021. US Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell froze again for around 30 seconds during a public appearance. This is the second such incident in a little over a month. 81-year-old McConnell froze while responding to questions posed by reporters. He was then escorted away. UK's Defence Minister Ben Wallace has resigned today. He confirmed the move after sending a letter to Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. In his official resignation, he appealed the government to not make defence spending cuts. Wallace was appointed as the Defence Minister in 2019 by former UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Meanwhile, Grant Shapps has been appointed as UK's new Defence Minister. Five Italian railway workers were killed after being run over by a train early today. The incident happened near the northern Italian city of Turin. Police officials say the train was travelling at speeds over 150 km per hour. Two workers managed to avoid getting hit by the train. The train driver was treated for shock and then allowed to go home. Moving to climate, Hurricane Idalia has stormed rather the US state of Florida. It has brought torrential downpours and destructive winds. Nearly 300,000 Florida homes and businesses were without power as on Wednesday. Meanwhile, in nearby Georgia, 160,000 people did not have electricity. US President Joe Biden has said that no one can deny the impact of the climate crisis anymore. His comments came as Hurricane Idalia made landfall in Florida. Joe Biden also announced $95 million in funding to improve Hawaii's electric grid. This is after catastrophic wildfires devastated the island of Maui in the US state of Hawaii. The European Union used 17% less fossil fuel to make electricity. This in the first half of this year, and the data is according to a study from the clean energy think tank Ember. The drop in fossil fuel power generation was driven by both a fall in demand for electricity as well as growth in clean power. Targeting the finance sector has made it difficult to do business for coal producers. This is as per the environmental group, Ensure Our Future. Coal producers are having to set aside millions of dollars to cover risks. That's because they are being neglected by insurers who are seeking to make, meet their climate pledges. The Ensure Our Future group called it an example of how citizens' actions create a tangible difference. Adam Bandt, the leader of the political party Australian Greens, has urged people to join climate protests. This is to pressure Prime Minister Anthony Albanese's government to stop opening new fossil fuel mines. He said this in an event organized by the climate group called Rising Tide. Grant also said that he's planning to blockade the country's largest coal port. Experts say the UK must introduce water labeling. This is to reduce the daily consumption of water. The labelling helps inform customers of the water efficiencies of appliances such as washing machines, dishwashers and showers. Experts say failing to do this will also add billions of pounds to customer water bills. In business and tech news, Beijing has allowed the public release of several chatbots. This will make Baidu's AI chatbot Ernie publicly available. Baidu originally launched Ernie earlier this year but it didn't, but it hadn't been made public available to the public. It's because China requires companies to receive clearances before releasing mass market AI products. 
Users of social media platform Twitter or X will soon be able to make audio and video calls on the platform. Owner Elon Musk announced this on the platform. Users will be able to do this without using their phone numbers. They'll be able to call each other by simply looking up their username. Google has introduced generative artificial intelligence to its search tool. This is for its users in India and Japan. Japanese users will be able to use the feature in their local language. Meanwhile, in India, the feature will be available in English and Hindi. This new AI search feature is different from Google's chatbot Bard. Kyrgyzstan is planning to ban TikTok. It has accused the video sharing app of causing addiction among children and affecting their mental health. TikTok also allegedly failed to block content that was harmful for children. The Kyrgyz government said that some children influenced by videos on the platform tried to mimic them, which could often be life-threatening. US Commerce Secretary has completed her four-day visit to China. At a press conference, Raimondo said that she had not expected any breakthroughs on issues during her first visit. However, the US Commerce Secretary hopes to see some results in the next few months. She also insisted the US does not want to decouple from China. The United States has extended the export ban on artificial intelligence chips beyond China. Exports have now been curbed for other regions, including some countries in West Asia. This is for chips made by NVIDIA and Advanced Micro Devices or AMD. However, both companies have said that the ban will not have any material impact on their revenue. Global payments processors Visa and MasterCard are reportedly planning to increase their interchange fees. An interchange fee is the amount that a merchant pays to the card issuing bank. This fee is charged every time a consumer swipes their card. The additional visa charges are set to begin in October for online transactions. Added fees for commercial credit, debit and prepaid cards will take effect from April next year. For MasterCard, the additional fee for credit card purchases will start in October. China-based property developer Country Garden has warned of, a, of default risks. This is if its financial performance continues to deteriorate. The company added that it will, it felt rather, quote-unquote, deeply remorseful for its record loss. Country Garden posted a net loss of nearly $7 billion in the first half of this year. This comes even as Chinese authorities take steps to revive the country's troubled property market. Meanwhile, China's Guangzhou and Shenzhen cities have said that they will ease mortgage curbs. This is in an effort to safeguard China's property sector. They will give first-time home buyers preferential loans regardless of their previous credit records. Moreover, some Chinese state-owned banks are also expected to lower interest rates on existing mortgages. Australia's competition regulator has sued Quanta Service. This is because the airlines allegedly sold tickets to more than 8,000 flights between May and July 2022. And this was without disclosing the flights had been cancelled. Moving to sports, First Post has confirmed that Viacom 18 has won BCCI media rights to broadcast cricket matches on television and digital platforms. This is only for international matches to be played in India for the next five years. The broadcast cycle begins from September 2023 and will last until March 2028. The e-auction process was being contested by Disney Star, Sony Pictures Network India and Viacom 18. Pakistan's captain Babar Azam said that his team is ready to take on India. This comes after Pakistan registered a decisive win over Nepal in the first match of the Asia Cup. Babar Azam made over 150 runs and propelled Pakistan towards a victory. He said, and I quote, This game was good preparation for the India game because it gave us confidence. India and Pakistan will be locking horns in Sri Lanka on the 2nd of September 
for their first Asia Cup match. Canada's Daniel Megahi will become the first transgender cricketer to feature in an international match. Megahi has been included in the squad for a T20 qualifier tournament. It's for the 2024 Women's T20 World Cup that will take place in Bangladesh and the T20 international match will be held on the 4th of September in Los Angeles. Australia crushed South Africa in the first 2020 international in Durban yesterday. Australia's new captain Mitchell Marsh's performance steered Australia towards a 111-run win. Australia scored 226 runs for six wickets in their 20 overs. South Africa were all out for 115 runs. This gives Australia a 1-0 lead in the three-match series. A T20 international match between England and New Zealand was held yesterday. England thrashed New Zealand by seven wickets in the series opener. Skipper Josh Butler won the toss and for England and opted to bowl first. New Zealand had set a modest target of 140 runs and England reached the target in the 14th over. With this, England took a 1-0 lead in the four-match T20 series. UEFA's Chief of Football, Wanimir Boban, said the stoppage time rules in English football won't be allowed or followed rather in European competitions. He said the rules are quote-unquote absolutely absurd. The new rules are to make up for the time lost during goal celebrations, injuries and so on. The intention is to increase the time, increase the time the ball is in play. Spanish football chief Luis Rubiales' mother was admitted to a hospital yesterday. She had started a hunger strike in support of her son. Rubiales has drawn criticism after he kissed footballer Jenny Hermoso at the Women's World Cup. This also had led to his suspension by FIFA. Rubiales' mother had locked herself inside a church to protest against how her son is being treated. Pia Sundhaj has stepped down as Brazil's coach. This is after the country suffered an early elimination at the 2023 Women's World Cup. The 63-year-old was hired in 2019 and was due to coach the team for the Paris Olympics next year. Brazil failed to advance from the group stage at the FIFA Women's World Cup and had only managed to win one out of three group matches. In tennis, world number one Iga Swiatek has entered the third round at the US Open. The 22-year-old Polish player defeated Daria Savel of Australia 6-3 and 6-4 in straight sets. For Iga Swiatek, the win was another step towards defending her US Open title. Newly crowned world number one Novak Djokovic continued his winning streak at the US Open. He beat Spaniard Bernabe Zapata Mireles 6-4, 6-1 and 6-1 to enter the third round. Djokovic will now take on his Serbian compatriot Laszlo Gere. In entertainment news, the CEOs of Hollywood's biggest studios are all set to meet. So far, no plan has been put in place to end the writers and actors strike. Disney CEO Bob Iger will not be participating in this meeting. It's unclear if the president of the union representing Hollywood Studios will be present. Remember, the writer's strike began in May and has been going on for months now. Trustees of Hollywood's Actors' Union SAG-AFTRA have unanimously decided to extend the health coverage of some participants. This includes those whose coverage will lapse on the 1st of October 2023. SAG-AFTRA's president said that this move will come as a great relief to members. The union's national executive director said, and I quote, It's a shame that studios and streamers have put so many SAG-AFTRA members in a position where they have to worry about basic necessities. A new poll shows that over 70% of Americans support Hollywood writers and actors in the ongoing strikes. Only 19% Americans have shown support for production studios. 67% Americans say they have sympathy for television and film actors. 
Hollywood writers and actors have been demanding better wages and the regulation of the use of artificial intelligence. Former US Secretary of State Hillary Clinton did not like actor Julia Sweeney's Saturday Night Live impression of her then teenage daughter Chelsea Clinton. Actor Julia Sweeney made a revelation on the podcast that's called Fly on the Wall. She said former US Secretary of State Hillary Clinton did not like actor her Saturday Night Live impression of Chelsea Clinton. This was in the year 1993 when Chelsea Clinton was still a teenager. Clinton apparently wrote a letter to SNL creator Lon Michaels about the sketch. sketch. Sweeney brought this up while talking about the lack of female representation on SNL in the early 1990s. Sweeney did not play Chelsea Clinton on the show again, but SNL continued to take digs at Clinton. Actor Bonnie Wright has reflected on playing the character of Ginny Weasley in the Harry Potter movies. She has voiced her frustration over her character's lack of screen time. In a statement, Wright said, and I quote, There were parts of the character that just did not get to come through because there were no scenes to do that. She added that it made her feel a bit anxious and frustrated. Wright's character, Gilly Weasley, has a much larger role in author J.K. Rowling's book series than in the movies. Director Joseph McIntyre Nicole, also known as Meg G, has said that he is not closing the door on a potential Charlie's Angels 3. The director made these comments while talking about his upcoming comedy film called Family Switch. Charlie's Angel, Angels rather, came out in 2000 and a sequel was released in 2003. Both movies got an underwhelming response at the box office. Several actors, politicians, models and filmmakers walked the red carpet in Venice. This was during the opening night of the world's oldest film festival. Massimiliano Rossi, Charlotte Rampling and Liliana Cavani were among those who made the red carpet appearance. This year's Venice Film Festival features several highly anticipated movies from acclaimed filmmakers. The main jury consists of renowned directors including Jane, Jane Campion, and Martin McDonough. Singer Miley Cyrus opened up about her feelings on her Malibu home that she shared with her former husband, Liam Hemsworth. Miley Cyrus said, and I quote, that house had so much magic to it, it ended up really changing my life. Hemsworth and Cyrus's Malibu house was destroyed by wildfires in 2018. After the house was destroyed, Hemsworth took to social media to share a picture of the rubble with the caption, it has been a heartbreaking few days. This is what's left of my house. The King of Pop, Michael Jackson's sons, Blanket Jackson and Prince Jackson made a rare appearance. They attended an event and greeted fans on what would have been Michael Jackson's 65th birthday. The legendary singer died in 2009 due to acute propofol intoxication in the US state of California. And finally, TikToker Levy Jed Murphy has revealed his facial transformation after five back-to-back -back plastic surgeries. He said that his favorite part about it is getting the content. The influencer reportedly told his surgeon that he wanted his plastic surgery to look dramatic and not natural. Murphy earlier got two nose jobs and three lip lifts done.